There's a little laptop that's making a comeback for some reason. It's the 12 inch MacBook, not MacBook Air, not MacBook Pro, 12 inch MacBook, 400 bucks. One that's in excellent condition. Renewed products look and work like new. I'm gonna test this out. And being that these products that are older than some MacBook Pros and MacBook Airs that you can get for cheaper, what's going on? This is just the wow factor and the fact that Apple is not even making these anymore. Because when these things came out, they were revolutionary. They were like nothing else out there they were so thin and small that people's minds were blown it does have that butterfly keyboard that everybody hates but maybe it's good add to cart check out let's see what happens all right my favorite knife i love this thing i was just at the airport and i had a tiny little 11 dollar pocket knife that i completely forgot about in my backpack they pulled me aside they said do you have anything here that can poke us or is fragile or is dangerous? And I'm like, no. And they're like, are you sure you wanna say that to us? And then I thought about it for a second. I said, oh, ah. And I'm really glad it wasn't this one, but a significantly cheaper $11 variety. I've never had this laptop and I've never even tried it out. I just never had an interest in it until now out of curiosity. So this is supposed to be a really good quality refurbished item. For the most part, it's not bad on top. There is a pretty significant scratch or dent right here like it was dropped. This side looks good. The audio jack port looks great. The back looks good. The USB-C port looks uh, used. We'll test it out. And let's take a look at the bottom. Looks decent enough, except for this. This is really weird. I don't even know what could cause something like that. It's like a big dent. Is that where the battery is? Is the battery exploding through the thing? I don't know. Now this thing is tiny. Just for reference, this is the M1 MacBook Air. They're actually shaped pretty much the same. They got the little wedge shape. Now I thought the MacBook Air was already pretty thin. This thing is ridiculously thin. Let's take a look inside. Not a one hand open. Okay, it's clean. The keyboard looks clean. Ah, yes. I remember that butterfly keyboard feeling. Those are tough to press keys. Never noticed it back then, but now it makes sense. MacBook Air M1, MacBook 12 inch. Keyboard looks to be about the same size as it should be. Air M1, 12 inch MacBook. Now let's see if this will power on by itself without charging. It's probably been on a box for a long time. The screen looks pretty good shape. There are a couple of just little tiny scratches on it. There is a little rubber seal going across the screen that protects the screen from touching the keys. And that one is a little bit worn off. I don't think I'll be able to capture that in a video, but this part right here is pretty rough. This came with a cable and a charging block, which looks to be pretty large. It's an 87 watt charging block, which is significantly more than this thing needs, I believe. So thanks, I guess. I doubt this is an original Apple one though. No, I don't think this is an Apple one, but it's pretty close. Let's plug it in. So I've been trying to turn this thing on. Now I know it's been probably not charged for a while, so this might take a few minutes, but so far nothing. I'm getting a little nervous. I've got this little thing that's going to see if there's any power flowing through this cable because it's not turning on. So I'm gonna plug this in here and plug this in here. Maybe the power adapter is bad or the cable is bad because I'm not seeing anything on the readout. I'm trying this anchor charger and the same cable. Now I know this charger works and let's try it with the MacBook Air first. We're getting 16 watts. Yeah, it's working. Now back to this one. Oh, huh, the power adapter was bad. The one they sent me. Doesn't work. So we're getting a 4.4 watt draw here. At least it's something. Let's try turning this on. Maybe I need to let it charge a little longer. All right, I just came back from a run. Let's take a look. This thing has been sitting here for about two hours charging. Doesn't turn on by itself. Come on. <laughs> we have life. It's alive, folks. There's the apple. Okay, it's not the quickest boot. We've got Monterey on there. That's probably the latest OS you can upgrade it to. I'm not upset, it's working. So I had to leave it overnight, finally it came on, and here I've got the M3 Core i5, whatever they call it, and the M3 MacBook Air, Apple Silicon, Intel, sitting here, this one's 33 degrees Celsius, 27. First thing I wanna do is check the drive speed. So I got Blackmagic disk speed test over here, let's go. <laughs> All right, there's the read and write speed on the M3 MacBook Air. The write speed is reaching 1700 and read speed 2700. Here, write speed is about 650, read speed 950. 
This is just for fun, folks. The walk down memory lane of what things used to be like. And since I do a lot of things for software developers on this channel, I'm gonna do a large Xcode compilation. You've seen me do this on this channel before. It's called Xcode Benchmark. And we got our friend, the Schwarzenegger, to do a little help here. Pretty simple, really. When I push this button, these fingers go down and push the enter keys at the same time. I never noticed how bad the butterfly keyboard is until I haven't used it for a few years. It's terrible. Move the finger modules into position and let's go. <laughs> this is gonna be a big difference. I have a feeling and it's not gonna be pretty. Okay, this is done, but uh, it took a little bit longer than I even imagined. Not for this one. Here, let me show you this. You gotta see this. M3 MacBook Air took 146 seconds. Not the fastest time, but it's the base model. Core i5 M3, ready for this? 1,353 seconds, 0.626. That's more than 22 and a half minutes. This machine is nine times faster than the old machine. That's crazy. We've come a long way. Let's just do a quick speedometer test. This will give us a single core browser JavaScript operation speed. This one's probably gonna be even worse. I can't even imagine. And this one is done. This is speedometer 3.0, and it's given us the new format of the scores. So if you see the old formats, they were in the 500s. This one is 36.7 on the M3. And this one is not even halfway done. Oh my gosh. This is probably the lowest score I've seen. Even the Intel MacBook Air from 2017 or 2015, 2017 I think, is way better than this, 5.3. So maybe not nine times. Actually, I'm not even sure if this is a logarithmic scale or not. Ugh, those numbers are just terrible. But you know what? It didn't just stop at performance. Usability is actually pretty bad on this thing too. For example, I'm gonna launch Xcode. Let's see what happens here. Xcode started here. It's thinking about starting Xcode. Maybe we'll start Xcode at some point. Right now we're just considering, should we start Xcode or should we just hang out here for a bit? Maybe have some tea, have some lunch. Well, it's, it's gonna do it, it's gonna do it. It decided it's gonna start Xcode. When is it gonna start Xcode? Let's let's have a meeting about when we're gonna have Xcode start, okay? Maybe next Thursday is good for you. How about you? Is Tuesday good? I don't know, let's see. What about Jack? Oh, Jack thinks now is good, okay. We started a project, here we go. You can imagine that uh, the rest of the experience of developing software on this thing will be probably just as tedious. So. I don't think there was any question in anybody's mind which of these machines is going to be faster, but it's interesting what this little old thing is capable of. It was way ahead of its time for what it was back in the day, and it's still, to this day, the thinnest MacBook. Maybe you can tell even from this video, but it is even thinner than the MacBook Air. Now, if you were developing software and you had a choice between this thing and an iPad, this thing would actually win because iPads are kind of not very useful as a standalone development device. They're useful as a secondary screen or augmentation to your main machine. And I made a video about that recently. You can watch it right over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.